So I got a go big or go home challenge this week. And this is going to be it. It's a uh, um, spruce. No, it's not. It's pine. It's blue pine. So all that's blue from freezing or bugs or whatever. I don't know what. Anyway, it's pretty punky over here. So I'm probably going to take a big wedge off of this. Oh, that's kind of crappy. Like my new lathe tool. Anyway. Pretty solid there. But I think I've got to take a little off here. I put a line on here, but I think I'm going to cut inside of it. I think there's a a lot better shape than what I think it is. Anyway, we're gonna do a little little chain plane in here and we'll get it fixed up. We'll get it in and on the lathe. Time to make our, time to get out our dividers again. I had center kind of marked on there, so. Well, it's somewhere around here. I'm going to say that's right there. And we'll call it good right there. That looks pretty good right there. 
Nice part about pine is it's really soft and I can just blow these things in here. It shouldn't cause me any trouble whatsoever. So this isn't going to fit over the rails, so we're going to have to do it the hard way. Ah, it ain't that big a deal. Just a few turns. Once I get it rounded out, then I can flip it back around over the rails. I want to have this over the rails. It's just a little more comfortable to turn. I can turn a little faster. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Here we go. We're going to mount it up. Let me get this spun around here so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Nothing to it, right? And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and tighten this one up. So this is the go big or go home bowl. This is one's for you, Steve. <laughs> By the way, Steve got me this piece of wood. Um, also from Montana, which was really nice of him. I, I, I appreciate the heck out of that. It's a, it's a really big piece. Um, uh, yeah, that's going to be a large turn. No doubt about it. But uh, we'll see what we get to here. So I'm going to go sharpen up. Because one thing about softwoods, you need sharp tools. So, and I'm going to start off with a half inch bowl roughing gouge thing. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's what the proper name is, but it's this one. This one right here. Can you see that? It's got a real deep groove. If I measure this, it's more than a half inch. So it must mean a half inch from there to there. I don't know. And then I have this one. It's also a half inch, but it's completely different. It's got a little shallow groove in it, and it's nice for, I got this nice long edge on it for, for shaving things with, and, and it works really good too. I like them both. Uh, I think they're both Sorbies. Yes, they are. Yep, Robert Sorby. This one was a gift. I got it from a cousin, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I've been using it a lot. Okay, we're starting out at 100 RPM. Let's see if it'll take that. Huh, not so bad. Let's get her up a little higher. Two hundred, two fifty, three hundred. I think we'll call it right there about three fifty. Or just light of 350. I'm going to put the face shield on.
Field. spot right there okay let's take her down some more boy that blue's pretty isn't it let's see we can do one of two things uh, why don't we walk on this some more and then we can bump the speed up get this chunk of junk off the side of it here and This bowl has a lot of tear out on the end grain, um, you know, and if you're a turner, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. Um, so there's, uh, at this point, um, if I use this, the, um, um, whatever, bowl gouge on it, the tear out is just going to keep happening. And what I need to do now <clears throat> is minimize the tear out. Um, and just real softly go over this thing until the end grain is uh, is cleaned up here and the tear out goes away. Um, I saw Ashley Harwood use a scraper in a video and I've done that before and I kind of custom turned this one so it has a round uh, round edge on the uh, over here. So if you know how to use a scraper, if you know uh, if you have a scraper, uh, you can use it. You just put it there and work it across the grain uh, it's it's easy to work a bead up on it just take seconds and uh, yeah uh, I'm gonna be doing that once I get the bulk of it taken down with the negative rake and uh, then we'll get to sand it on the outside and, and uh, go to work on the inside all right here we go mask on We're turning 500 RPM. And I 
have to move this back a little bit. A little more standoff there. Mask and face shield on. there. Oh, look at that big knot. Oh, that's this whole, that's this whole deal. Oh, I got a scraper there. Let's see if I can scrape that out. Still got that in there. Still staying intact. But I got a... 
lined up my center here. We took a lot of weight out. Maybe we can spin her up another 100 RPM or so. We're only running 500. I'm going to put my mask back on. stay in there hmm we gotta keep going deeper man this is gonna be a big bowl Okay, what's going on now is we've taken all this structure out of the bowl and what's happening now is the centrifugal force is deforming it as we're turning. So when you get out here on the edges, it's making funny, sketchy sounds. We're getting pretty close to the size. I don't want to, I'm going to leave it fairly thick, maybe half inch. And uh, um, because we've got to scrape it down a long way, so I don't know. All of this, all of this tear up here has to go away, and that's probably almost a oh, three sixteenths right there, all by itself, just to get that tear out out of it.
Here's what we're dealing with. I don't know if you can see this or not. Well, maybe I'll do it on this side. If you look right down in here, I don't know if you can catch that tear out or not, but it's massive. I mean, it, there's a lot of it there. So I'm going to have to scrape that down. And that tear out is probably uh, fat eighth deep. So that's going to thin this out even further. All across the bottom, I'm going to have to get through this point right here this point right here because that's pitch and it'll just fall out and this right here although it isn't although it's you know I mean it's pretty sound if I go any thinner it's not going to be very sound this is pine so it's not strong like maple or alder or maple or uh, oak or something like that it's kind of frail and that's again there's the tear out so that has to go, and that's probably that's probably an eighth or more of thickness. Then there's a little tear out here, and tear out right here. And I don't I don't like to fill tear out. I like to get all the way out of it. Some I mean sometimes it's just inevitable. You're just going to have to fill it. But uh, um, this is soft wood, so I think I think I can get it out of there. Anyway, there you go. That's what we're dealing with. Scraping. Now because this is big like this, I can use this scraper. But if it's small, not a good idea. Slow this down a little bit. So after one coat of sanding sealer, um, more is revealed. I still have tear out down here that I got to try to work through. And some tear out right here that I have to work through. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to get on it with the scraper again. I guess that's why you put more than one coat of sanding seed on it. I know I got some tool marks right here that's got to go. Let's see how this is doing from last night. I think it's still sharp. We're going to go after it. And we'll.
Yep, we're at three coats of sanding sealer, and I think we may go one more. Anyway, I have to sand that down one more time, and we'll we'll have a we'll see. And then maybe we'll just go to some polishing compound and color good. Looks good though. Here it is, the Montana Blue Pine, all finished up and ready to go. It's uh, about 15 and a quarter inches wide and six inches tall. Um, that turned out great. It was fun to turn. Um, what can I say? It's beautiful. Uh, what do you think? Write it in the comments. Um, yeah, uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. If you uh, and and hit the like button and if you got a comment please share and I'll uh, yeah I'll uh, see you on the next video.